If you're thinking of buying Tobira beginning Japanese book or want to know about this book, this video is for you. Hi smart learners, my name is Akane and a few months ago, I created the video about Konnichiwa. It's about etymology. No edamame. Anyways, one of my viewers on TikTok commented and asked me how I thought about Tobira book. At that time, I didn't have it, but I got curious and I bought it on Amazon pretty much right away. And I noticed this book is quite new actually, just published in July 2021. There is an intermediate version, which is this one, and this one was published back in 2009. So it's interesting that the beginner level was published 12 years after its intermediate level. By the way, Tobira means the door, so that's why there's a door up here. Door to the Japanese learning journey! Today, I'll share seven things about this Tobira beginning Japanese, Shokyu Nihongo Tobira, so that you'll know what this book is like before buying this, or you might find something new if you already have one, so please stick around. So number one, lots of visual materials like charts, tables, actual colored photos, colored pictures. So for example, there are 10 lessons in this book and each lesson has a page with a list of vocabs, tango, and you're gonna see each vocab has a picture. Wow, that's amazing. I cannot stress enough the importance of visual materials when you're learning something new. And I think this book has so many great visual materials, and I just like the way the characters and things look. It's just my opinion. So number two, fonts are small and lots of information packed in one page. It says this book is for beginners and instructors who are looking for a beginner level book. But I think some beginners might find it a little bit overwhelming or almost like intimidating with the amount of information in one page. And there are about 380 pages and most of them are packed with lots of information. Lots of information. Personally, as a Japanese teacher, I really like it because other Japanese books that I have are not like this and I really appreciate lots of examples. But I can imagine it might be too much for new learners. Number three, audio QR code. So when you want to listen to the pronunciation, you just scan the QR code and then instantly it'll take you to the page where you can click and listen to the pronunciation. I definitely love how easy it is. Some of the audio examples are with male voice, female voice, and sometimes it's like gentleman's voice. You know how low and elegant kind of voice, if you know what I mean? And I found it, it's funny. <laughs> Number four, we're gonna talk about charts. Hiragana chart, katakana chart, verb conjugation, and adjectives are easy to access. Japanese textbooks usually come with these charts, but what I love about Tobira is that charts are very well organized. It mentions about voiceless, semi-voiced, voiced sound, and contracted sound, so it's very clear. So there are hiragana chart and katakana chart at the beginning of the book, and there are verb conjugation tables and adjective at the end of the book. And it categorizes verbs into u-verb, ru-verb, and irregular verb. So if you're familiar with these names, that will be a plus. Number five. There are things might be hard to navigate or hard to find. It has vocabulary index closer to the end of the book, and that is Japanese to English. So say for example, if you hear a Japanese word and want to know the meaning of that, you can find it there. The vocabs are listed in order of Japanese phonetic alphabet, hiragana. Having said that, if you know the word only in English and try to find out how to say it in Japanese, you won't be able to find it easily. There is no English to Japanese version of it. Unlike Genki, which is another well-known book, has both English to Japanese and Japanese to English. Also, when you want to know specific particles, you're going to have to look at contents pages and under each lesson's grammar to find it. So it might be hard to find it as well. Number six, topics and materials are current. Language is always changing, right? The basic grammar might be the same, but there are so many updates. And things in this book are suitable in the current world, current event, because it was just published in 2021. For instance, it talks about music, and there is a picture of a smartphone. 
because people would listen to music through their smartphone, right? Not from CD or a cassette tape. Sorry if you don't know what that is. More and more katakana words are used now, which I know it could be a pain for Japanese learners because we have our own way to pronounce foreign words and they don't sound like the original word at all sometimes. But my point is that this book includes lots of katakana words that Japanese people use daily. And I love the negative noun form is noun plus janai desu instead of ja arimasen or dewa arimasen. And I think it's very important for Japanese learners because a majority of people use ja nai desu instead of ja arimasen or dewa arimasen nowadays. Number seven, romaji. Until you master hiragana and katakana, English reading aid called romaji can help you to read and pronounce words. There are 10 lessons in this book, like I mentioned before, and lesson zero and one have romaji written under hiragana and katakana so it can help you. But then from lesson two and onwards, romaji is taken away. And now you realize that you need to be able to read hiragana and katakana. And I think it's great because let's be honest, when you see romaji written there, you will look at it consciously or unconsciously and you might not be able to learn hiragana and katakana as fast as you would like. Ginki book is the same way. It has romaji on lesson one and two, but no romaji after that. I think it's effective. By the way, I mentioned about Genki book just to compare because Genki is a very popular book and I'm sure some of you already have it. If not, there's a link in the description below. So those are seven things about this book and I hope this video clarifies some of the questions that you might have. Everyone has different opinions and these are just mine. The question you should ask yourself is, is it a fit for me? Is it going to be sustainable? I put the Amazon link in the description below in case you're interested so that you can see the explanation of the book there as well. You might want to double check to see if there's any cheaper ones or any bundles that Amazon has because I have no control of it. But if you do buy it or if you have one already and using it, I would love to hear what you think about this book as well. So please comment down below and let me know. So my answer to my thumbnail is yes, it's worth it for me and I'm so glad that my viewer mentioned about this book. Thank you! If you enjoy this video, you might enjoy this video as well. And thank you so much for watching. Mata ne!